Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do your way. Because with our creative minds combined, we're going to find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. Demo time. Let's check out all the sweet features this has. Like first, we'll start with the mouse. As we hover over each of these buttons, look at how they uniquely shoot out in 3D space. We're translating Z, and since we have perspective on the whole body here, they have somewhere to vanish towards or to come at us. And look at this, I'm bringing things towards the screen to create this focus, and I have multiple layers. And since each of them are traveling a different distance and I have a little bit of delay in the animations, it really makes this a cool effect, like something is really moving in 3D space towards us. It also kind of feels like we're in an AR, you know, video game or something like that, right? Like we've got a little pointer in our hands and look as I mouse back and forth like this and up and down, we can kind of change the rotation that's like slowly happening. So there's an animation that's causing this to sort of constantly float in space, but my mouse can interrupt it and sort of get in there and create even more of like a 3D experience in there. So anyway, those are some of the mouse experiences. Down here is the light theme. We've got the light theme and reduced motion. So look at the reduced motion experience. We're not rotating the thing in 3D space. There's no like motion float effect and there's no animation as we hover over each, but we are still pushing things in 3D space. It's just much less like see new game here. It's sort of like, I think this one has like 10 pixels of distance is traveling and this one's traveling like 40 or 50 pixels. And so way less distance traveled, still getting a nice color highlight, still looks like a focused element and still has a nice push effect. Like, look at this, look at that push effect. And it's very satisfying. It feels really nice on a controller too, or like on your keyboard um, as you push space and those things drop in there. Like here, I'll tab into this. I hit up and down on my arrow keys, uh, just like if I was on a controller, hit space and look at these. That's just nice, right? It feels like I'm right at home in a video game. We can see it rendering across all these different browsers. Here's uh, iOS Safari on a tablet. We have uh, iOS Safari on a phone and then we have Android down here. And so that covers our light theme, our keyboard usage. We've got screen reader accessibility because of the way that we structured our HTML and we'll check that out in a second. But there's one more thing I wanna talk about that's kind of hard to see and I, I, it's probably not coming through in the video, but on my screen, which is an HD screen, I've tapped into Safari's ability to show brighter colors uh, using Display P3. And the borders on these are just like lightning neon on my screen. And they're just really vibrant and bright. They just look, they are, they're pushing all the pixels on my screen to their brightest nits. And it looks so cool. So that's an overview of what we have built. And let me go into sort of how I built that and the sort of internals. And to start, let's start with the HTML. What I chose to do was make a button list. And I did that with a UL, has a class of 3D button set. There's an LI for each button. So that gives us a list of buttons and screen reader technology and all sorts of things know exactly what that is and how to display it. So with that structural markup as our base, let's go look at a couple things that we needed to set on the body so that we got 3D perspective and can start building out our layout that you know makes the buttons grow and look big and juicy and then start filling out all the three-dimensional layers. Let's go check that out in Chrome. Uh, this looks so sweet, uh, huge. I love that the buttons at the bottom uh, just are so different and they're a little bit more extreme in the transform than in the middle. Like the middle, it's coming towards you, right? You have to like turn this thing to the side to even know that it's really doing that. Okay, anyway, I digress. Let's open up our dev tools and look at some of the things that are making this all happen. All right, first off, let's throw a couple of the grid overlays on here because they track the 3D elements. So look at this, we have a grid on body that's centering our content, centering our UL list. And then we have a grid on Flexbox that look at that, it's even showing like there's still some margins on the UL. I have to take that off or is that padding? It's probably some padding. And then there's some gap in between each of the buttons. And look at the overlay continue to paint while this is rotating 3D space. Just what a cool feat. And it looks really neat in the uh, editor there. And I could probably go in there and like change some of the gaps and stuff and watch it continue to follow it. And that's just really cool. Uh, I thought I'd show that just because that looks so neat. And you can see how much the perspective is helping this thing bust out of its box. So here, let's get rid of the flex box one and keep this box and go change some of the perspective on the body. So this value right here, 40 viewport wide is what I've set the perspective to. And this drastically changes the way that the, it's like the amount of effect that a rotation or something in 3D has. And interestingly, lower numbers result in a bigger more, here, I'll just show you, lower numbers are gonna result in a more extreme rotation. Uh, so here, I don't want negatives, but look at this. It's like, I go to six or seven VW. Look at this. Whoa, talk about being in 3D space. Whoa, okay, wait, let's, let's change that. Let's go back up to something a little bit larger. Here's 21. All right, still a little too extreme. Let's turn off the grid just so we get a smoother experience here. Nice, okay, so right, I didn't want anything that extreme. I wanted something a little bit more subtle than that. And so I settled on something like 40 VW. But if we crank this up to like 82, watch as we sort of get way less 
out of our rotations and way less out of our translate Z. And so this is like a fun lever that you can play with when you're building something in 3D on the web is what is your perspective? How much do you want your changes in 3D to be reflected visually in perspective? And this is the way that you can go change that. So here, let me go change this back down to 40. Awesome. The next thing I want to show you is um, this rotation that's happening on this UL is just a, here, let's go to the animations and we can hit uh, refresh and it should record. Yeah, here we go. Here's our animation. So we've got one happening here. It's called rotate Y on the whole UL. And that is what's continually and infinitely playing uh, back and forth. And here I can grab the scrubber here and kind of change that and see it and what it's doing there. And it's, it says it's only rotating Y, but there is a light rotation on X. Oh, it says rotate Y because that's what I named it. And if we hover on each of these, we can see each of these animations pop up here too. And we can kind of go replay them and see how many different effects I've put on there, right? We have a background color that's changing when I hover. We have a position that's hovering for each of these different pseudo elements. So right, there's a before and an after on the button. Um, and it's just kind of neat to see all of that play out like that. Okay, so that's our animation panel. Uh, that was the rotation that we have on there. It's just an animation right here. Rotate Y five seconds, ease in out forever. Um, let's go actually look at that animation really quick because it has a cool technique in it that I want to share. The animation definition is right here with at keyframes, rotate Y. And notice that I'm only setting a middle point. So I'm not saying zero or 100% or from and to, I'm saying 50%. And what this allows me to do is tell it where it should be in the middle of the animation. And zero and 100% are going to be the natural positions of rotate Y and rotate X, which allows me to easily do an infinite animation because it's going to go from its current position to this one at 50% and then back to its original position and then back to middle and back to 100%. So we get this really uh, subtle way of making an infinite animation that can um, kind of ping pong itself with just one keyframe. So you might have been tempted to do like something like 0%, uh, 100% here. This is like a shortcut way folks like to do it. Um, and then put your like transform, rotate Y and rotate X is zero in there. That's totally unnecessary. You can just say in the middle, I want it to be here and it will figure out the rest. And I just think that's a really cool effect. Uh, next, let's start drilling into the CSS very specifically. Let's open up the 3D button set and look at some of the custom properties. We have X and Y here. Those are going to be set with JavaScript on mouse interaction. We have a distance set to one pixel, and that's because when you're doing transforms these days, you're going to want the position of things to be at least one pixel in space. Uh, zero is sort of a struggle because it's in the middle of all the planes. And anyway, if you set a distance of one pixel, you'll save yourself from a lot of 3D perspective um, issues. So anyway, kind of a hot tip. One pixel there is great for uh, translate Z or something like that as a starting place because you're sort of like giving it an initial 3D position to be in. We have some color theming happening. We have max rotate Y and max rotate X at 10 degrees and 15 degrees and then some colors here. Also this bounce ease, super cool. So that's why when you're hovering and you're getting that nice bounce effect through all the layers and because we're just sharing that custom property to all of them, we'll get into that. But I want to show uh, how we use the rotate Y and rotate X, these maximums here. It's kind of fun. So we remove the margins on a UL. We got a vertical rag right layout, right display flex, flex direction columns. So it's going to go top to bottom. Align items flex start is going to make sure that they don't stretch to the width and gap of two and a half VH. So that we're getting a nice little vertical gap in there. We set transform style to preserve 3D. So you need this if you're going to be doing things in 3D. It's very easy to forget. But this tells the container that things are going to happen in 3D space here. It gives, like I said here, it creates a 3D space context. Uh, and we're going to do that a couple times here as we go through the CSS. But here's our clamped menu rotation. So right, we don't want to be too extreme. So our rotate Y, we're going to pass in clamp. And clamp is going to set a min at like negative 15 degrees, a max at 15 degrees. And it's going to allow the middle range to be set by JavaScript here as the Y value. And notice this is transformed. So when we hover, we're setting this Y and we're setting this X. And these clamps make sure that we don't overly rotate that cool card and we don't under rotate the card. We're sort of within a healthy range. And it's kind of a lot to read, but I broke it out and I thought it really like the end solution is really nice. CSS is handling a lot of really cool uh, complex behavior here. All right, when we have motion OK, so this should look pretty familiar as like a custom media that I stash, we set will change to transform, right? We're going to tell the browser, hey, we're going to be doing a lot of transform changes here, so you should be ready for that. And then we also set the transition to transform 0.1 seconds E. So as we're mousing over, we want to transition between these new X and Y values instead of instantly snapping to some new rotation. Then we're also consecutively like running an animation all the time. It's called rotate Y, but we saw it rotated X and Y. We set that for five seconds, easing out forever, right? Super cool, our dark theme here. And here's our HD color. So if the browser supports a high dynamic range of color and they support this color syntax here, color display P3, this is just a really deep black, 
Well, then I'm going to set the theme to a really nice vibrant purple that I created here. And that's why in Safari, which does support HD color and supports this color syntax, gets that really nice vibrant color set there. So that is how the styles were applied to the UL. Let's look at the 3D button set for the LI. What do we do here? Okay, so we have another display inline flex. That pretty much gets, oh yeah, here we say change display type from list item because otherwise we see a bullet. So this gets rid of the marker uh, slash bullet position relative because the buttons are going to have pseudo elements that need to be positioned inside of this container. And again, we create another 3D space context uh, here. So I'll go ahead and collapse that. And last here, we'll look at our 3D button set. So here's our button. This is where a lot of the magic happens. So first we want to get rid of a lot of the default button styles because we're going pretty custom. We want to bring in some of our brand styles. So here's where we set the background color and the text shadows and stuff like that. And these can all be changed, you know, in a, a media query. So a font size of Vmin, I just wanted a big text. I brought in a custom font called Audio Wide so it looked more like a video game. Some padding inline, some logical properties here. Border radius, we have five pixels and 20 pixels and that gives them the sort of uh, asymmetrical corners. Well, one of the corners, two of the corners are like very rounded and the other two are just slightly rounded. Gives it a nice like future effect, I thought. Then we have here, prepare for three perspective transforms. So we set our transform to translate ZVAR distance. That's going to be one pixel by default. And we set our transform style to preserve 3D. So again, we're saying this is a space where things are going to be popping in 3D. And we want to make sure that those uh, come through and that they have a space to work inside of 3D space. So anyway, this is just another hook for them to go into the perspective. Now, this is kind of a tricky one here, but it says is hover or focus visible. So right, this is focus visible as if my I'm coming from a keyboard if I'm um, not with my mouse, like I don't want to see normal focus. I want to see focus only for um, folks that are using something that need to see focus. So I'm just relying on the browser to sort of give me a more minimal focus state here. It's just a more appropriate one. So if it's being hovered or focused and the button is not being pressed, then what I want to do is increase the distance, right? Because if it's pressed, I want to restore it back to that distance of one pixel. That's what gives it that pressed effect. And so while it's not being pressed, we set the distance to 15 pixels. I set the background color to a nice little hover background highlight. And if motion is okay, right, I can set up transitions and increase the distance even more. So if motion is okay, I set the distance to 3V max. So that gives us a nice relative unit to the screen. We set the transition timing function to that bounce ease that we set up earlier and a transition duration of 0.4 seconds. Then in order to get a nice little stagger effect, the after and before each have a different transition duration. So that means the one in the back and the one on the front of this button are all gonna sort of transition at a different speed but arrive in their final locations really nice. And it just gives it that nice like bouncy staggered effect that I thought looked really nice. And now let's go to find some of our before and afters. So our before and afters are kind of unique. They're mostly just border elements. They're absolutely positioned border elements that I uh, created so that when they're flat, they look like one border. But when you hover, you can see that it's actually three layers. So I set the content here so that we can create an empty element. I set the opacity to 0.8 just because futuristic UIs always have some sort of transparency in them, don't they? I cover the parent with position absolute and inset zero. So this gives our pseudo elements the top right bottom left of zero, which is going to expand it to fill the whole area. So it's a quick way to cover a whole item uh, with another item and you know create it like a stack effect. And I'm going to style the element for border accents. So this is our border one pixel. We get that theme, that nice blue, uh, depending if we're dark or light. I get that border radius again. So we match the border radius of the border that they're inside of. And I move in Z space with a multiplier. So here's, we're currently still in the before and after. So both of them are going to get translate Z. This is where we're starting to push things into three dimensional space. We calculate that distance, which we set to a V max value and we divide by three. So that's going to give each of these a distance that's a little bit different than the main button itself. And if motion is okay, we'll transition that transform so that they push in space that way. And then I'm going to make an exception here. Yeah, exceptions for one of the other items. So one gets pushed back and one gets pushed forward. And this one's going to get pushed back because it's going to take that same calculation, but multiply it by a negative one. And by multiplying a negative one, we're going to push one border behind our button and we're going to bring one border in front of our button. So we want our text nice and legible, but we want these three cool layers. And then uh, another effect I don't know if anyone noticed is on dark mode, there's a glow around the button. And this is how I got that glow effect is, and I just thought it looked kind of cool. If you're in a dark room, it's always nice when things that are nice and bright have a cool glow effect. And again, here, if motion is OK, we're going to tell the browser we're about to change the transform on these pseudo elements and these buttons like you better be ready. And here's how you should do it. Do the background color at half a second with ease and transform and you know, transition the transforms at 0.2 seconds and rotate Y. That's literally all the CSS and all the HTML that it took to get that primary effect done. Now, there's some JavaScript that we wrote to get some more effects, but let's go look at the um, 
Dom, and let's go look at the dev tools and kind of like inspect some of these things really quick just to get a better grip of what's going on there. All right, we're back in giant Chrome, giant demo area. And maybe you can now see the little glow effect that's happening. You can see the glow around the edges here. And look, as we hover, you can see that one border was pushed in front of our button layer, right? Let's see, it's like a little bit in front. And then another one is behind it. So our, our main button that has like the most solid of the text here is in the middle of two borders that sort of one shot towards you and one shot away. And I just thought that made for a really cool effect. They all move a little bit, but some move farther than others. And again, with that delay and the bounce effect, we get this really nice sort of like, I don't know, it feels very lightweight and physical in nature and just kind of cool. Also, if you look over here in the style, you can see that X and Y are being set as I mouse around this element here. Look at that. Those are being fed into our calc or our clamp, remember? And those are changing the actual position and we're transitioning that over 0.1 seconds. And that's how we're doing that. And that transition is able to interrupt the animation and it just looks kind of cool. I thought it looked really nice. Let's twirl open our oh, one of our buttons here and look at our pseudo elements. Nice. Okay, so we have a pseudo element here, and a pseudo element here, and when we hover, we can see that they push out a little bit. Um, and just that's that was all the effect that it took. Um, you can see that they're covering the whole space. One of them has a little bit more of a border too. It has a yeah three pixel border width. And here I'll just bump it up a little bit to like eight, and we'll hover, and you can see that that's the one in the back. So the one in the back is sort of like the the primary border that's like very visual, but I push it back in so much that I can bring up a really hairline one towards you and it just kind of creates this cool effect because when they're sitting together you don't really know that there's three layers but when you push in or when you hover you get this nice effect that they're there so let's like briefly go over some of the javascript and we'll go from there because one of the things of course we have roving ux in here and that's what's enabling me to use my up and down arrow keys here and create a focus strap inside this menu um, and that I think makes a really nice effect because you can use left and right arrows or up and down arrows to navigate this. And I think that's a really important thing to consider here, especially because uh, this looks like it should be used from a controller. You should be able to use it from the keyboard and a controller. It just made a whole lot of sense. Anyway, let's go briefly look at the JavaScript and then we'll jump out of this demo. There are two parts to the JavaScript. The first one is the mouse parallax and then the arrow key support. So let's start with the arrow key support. I imported roving index from my roving UX library, which we've been using in a lot of these demos. It sure seems like the roving um, keyboard navigation is really important. So anyway, I bring it in all the time. And here I am, I can target my 3D button set and tell it that the targets for the focus are the buttons. And so that's why when you focus into this element, it pushes it down to the first button and then allows you to iterate through the buttons. And that was as easy as that. You can install this from NPM or from a, a CDN. But now let's look at the mouse parallax. So the first thing I do is I grab the menu with a selector so that I can uh, grab its bounding client rect. And so by looking at the full container here and then getting its bounds, I'm able to know if the mouse is in the left side or the right side or the upper part or the lower part. And then I can use those bounds with the current mouse position to decide how much I want to rotate it. So anyway, we'll, we'll get there. Here I check if motion is okay on load. So if there is uh, no preference, which means motion is gonna be okay. So this will match if the user is okay with motion and I give it a quick little rename. We'll use this right here to set up our event listeners. So here's our event listener. As long as motion is okay, we're gonna watch mouse move and uh, grab the target, which is gonna be our um, window object and, and the X and the Y. And the X and the Y, we're gonna feed directly into get angles and get angles is gonna return us a delta of X and a Y. We're gonna use the delta to set these custom properties and we're gonna pad that we're like drastically gonna reduce how much delta there is by dividing by 20. So you can kind of play with these values down here. But then here's get angles, takes the current mouse X, Y, grabs the um, some values off of the bounding rect that we grabbed earlier. So we stashed this in memory on load. And now we can grab the height and width and the X and the Y of this particular element, use the current mouse positions and figure out what's going on here. And so in this case, we're saying client X, which is their current X mouse position. We're going to take the half of the width plus the X position of this element. So this element's in the middle of the screen. So we need to know it's X. And we also want to know if we're on the left or the right side. So that's why we're um, multiplying by 0.5. And by doing this calculation and this one, we're able to return a delta that we can then use in here. So that's how the JavaScript worked to get that mouse effect. This is how we got the keyboard effect. We went over every piece of HTML and every piece of CSS. I hope you enjoyed this demo of this 3D game menu. I had a whole lot of fun building it and be stoked for the next GUI challenge. I'll see you later, y'all. Thanks for watching.